What if I told you that you don't ever have to compete for a listing ever again? You don't ever have to compete for a buyer ever again. You, you're done interviewing for the job. What if, what if the seller, what if the buyer, they just chose you, okay? But when you first hear from them, when they call you and they send you a text, when you first hear from them, it's to hire you. They've made up their mind that they want to work with you before you even know that they exist. Well, that is actually something that you can create for yourself. And Matt Leonetti from the Over Ask podcast will tell you how, okay? Matt Leonetti, he has absolutely transformed his career over the last couple of years by doing content on social media. He swears a lot. He swears like a freaking sailor, to be honest with you, but he just attracts the right people who want to work with him. And he's gonna break down what you should be posting online, what you should do if you're starting out, and, it, and how it works. Okay, this is, if you are not doing content on social media, then you're constantly going to be interviewing for the jobs because no one knows who you are. But as you'll hear today, with the right content on social, they'll already know who you are and hire you before you even know that they exist. What's up, guys? I'm here with Matt Leonetti, the host of the Overass podcast and one of the most hilarious realtors on social media, which is a scientific fact, by the way. Matt, welcome to the Massive Agent Podcast, my friend. Thank you so much. I'm uh, honored to be here. This is a this is like the gold standard. You're <laughs> pretty much the Joe Rogan of real estate podcasting. Oh shit! I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. But so does that mean that after today you you've peaked? You just yeah. Oh, it that's in? it. That's it. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. No, thank you. I appreciate you coming on the show, dude. Because I've uh, I've really enjoyed the reels you do, the the content you put on social, your podcast. And uh, what I what I love about you and respect about you is that you you're just doing business your way, and um, and so today I wanted to, to talk about what that means, you know. And I, I don't know anything about you uh, prior to when you started putting out content where you were like dressing up as the the front man of Queen and yeah. you know shit, shit like that. Um, I don't know much about you, which I mean that that shows right there why you should be putting content out because people don't know you unless they see you. You know, yeah, it's pretty basic. So, um, real quick, like, how long have you been in real estate? Like, are you still selling homes? Where are you? Like, what has the content you've done um, done for your sales? Like, let's jump into it. Tell me all yeah. about it. Yeah, so I've been in five years in October. Okay, uh, so yeah, it's gonna be my five year anniversary now. Um, I work, I work in Toronto. I'm from you know Toronto, but I, I live just outside of like forty minutes out. Um, GTA. So I do, GTA. Hey, you know GTA? I do. I know GTA. Absolutely. Oh, that's incredible. No one yes. knows GTA. Who's not for, from the GTA? Dude, I thought everyone knew the GTA. It's like the DMV for uh, no. DC, Maryland, Virginia. Right? I've had, I've been on a lot of uh, podcasts from the states, and no one knows really anything about Toronto. What a bunch of you're bunch incredible. Of that's why you're the Joe Rogan of real estate podcast. <laughs> it's the greater <laughs> Toronto area for, for you yes. that are wondering what the hell GTA is. And it's exactly not, it's not Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> no, not Grand Theft Auto. Although no. there is some of that that goes on too. But um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I've been in for five years. Before this, I was a touring musician. Um, so that's where a lot of the parodies and stuff come from. Really? Yeah. And uh yeah, it's just been a, a bit of a whirlwind since I started doing these videos. I started doing them about a year and a half ago. Um, my business has completely changed. It's taken off in, mm. in many different ways. Um, I was getting very drained of seeing the same thing over and over and over again. And I always said like, you know, everyone's doing the same thing. And like, I felt the business hadn't evolved in so many years. I felt like we were the only business still stuck in the mud. Like, we're doing things like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross from the early nineties in, you know, 2016. So, right. um, I kept saying that and I never did anything. And then I was always on teams when I started, because I, I really do think you should be on a team when you start real estate, you just, you don't know anything when you get into it. So to have someone guide you, uh, is great, but being on teams meant I couldn't really do exactly what I wanted because mm. it's, you know, it's their business and we run it a certain way. So as soon as I kind of went out on my own, I had all these kind of comedy ideas that people always told me, you know, they're not going to take you seriously and, and, and stuff like that. So I never did them. And then when I went out on my own, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try something. And, uh, 
I tried one called it's I called the shut the front door video and I keep like almost swearing in the video and it was a really shitty listing. So I needed something to market it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I just did like, you know, welcome to my listing. If you don't like it, you can shut the, and then I'd cut scene, go to the front door, be like front door and then like keep almost swearing. And then I that, saw that one. Yeah, oh yeah. That, that was like, that was like the first one. Yeah. So um, classic. Yeah. It was a terribly no mic filmed on an iphone by my wife like terrible quality i just wanted to get something out there um i did that and it sold in like six or seven hours uh it got three offers and two of the offers were from the video the agents called and said hey we saw your video we want to see the house this and that so once that happened i was like okay maybe there's something here um and then i just kind of kept building on it and seeing how much i could get away with and you can kind of see the evolution of it gets like kind of riskier and riskier as uh, the months go on. <laughs> you become more comfortable, you know, just being yourself. Yeah, exactly. So right. you're trying to find that line. I like being on that line of like, oh, fuck, should he say that? Should a real estate right. agent say that? Right. And uh, I like being right there. So it's been well, fun. Let's let's talk about that line then, because, you know, I think so many people battle with that because they're told all the time and if they listen to this show, they hear it all the time. Be your damn self. Like, yeah, you, how are you supposed to be someone else? Like it's hard enough being yourself, let alone trying to be somebody else and then going back to yourself. So just be yourself. And for some people like that scares them. Cause they're like, well, what does that mean? Exactly. Like, can I swear? Can I like, should I do this? I'm like, what would you do? I, I don't yeah, know. Exactly. You know, like, I swear you swear some, sometimes more than others. Like I just don't think about uh, filtering myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I just put stuff out there. And what was the progression like? Because you eased into it. Um, were you more conscious in the beginning and kind of like, oh, is am I going too far? Is this, you know, am I not being professional enough? Like, is this even okay to do? Like, what, what was your thought process through through all that? Yeah, that was exactly it. I mean, all, all right, right, moving I, on. Moving when, on. <laughs> you hit it on the head, so we're yeah. good. No, when I, um, when I got when I got into the business, I got in because I thought, you know, I have a good personality. I think I can relate with people. And then as soon as I got in, ironically, I lost all my personality Mm. and I just was doing something that I thought you should do. I was dressing a way I thought I should dress and saying things like other top producers in the office. And I just wasn't being myself at all. And I couldn't understand, you know, I'm doing exactly what he's doing. He's sell. he's doing a million dollars a year. Why, you know, why isn't it working for me? It's because it's not me and people could read through your bullshit. So yeah, once I started um, doing that, I run everything past my wife too. So she's a good, like, okay, she's a good indicator of like, oh no, don't fucking do that. You know, that's, she's your editor in chief. Career will end. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I remember telling her like early on, <laughs> I was like, oh, I wish I could just say like, fuck. And then like, <laughs> and then like, I, I kind of like eased into it. So then I was like, okay, well I'll say fuck and I'll bleep it out. Right. And then, and then ha- like a couple months later, I was like, why am I bleep? You know, I'm saying fuck. Yeah. So why don't right. I just say fuck? You know, I think it'll be, I think that a good swear word properly used is just the most effective thing you can do. A good fuck, like gets your attention. But, to with, me. The, <laughs> with the right flair on it. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Isn't it funny? People like, well, you know, you obviously don't have a very big vocabulary or, you know, you're not that intelligent if if you have to use those words. And, and I mean, some people, yes, some people, they just sit, you know, they just let it rip because they can't say anything else. But what you're talking about is like that it's part of conversation and it adds a certain tone that you wanted. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's not like you're just some knuckle dragging, drooling idiot that's swearing, like you're, you're intelligent and then you throw it in there for emphasis. And, um, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. Here's what's funny. Yeah. No, no, continue. And then, then I'll tell you something. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So I was doing that and I was just kind of getting more and more. And then I noticed like, okay, the, the swearing is a bit of like a shock factor. Yeah. That's never really been seen so much in real estate, like just to be openly swearing like that. So I was like, okay, if I can use this properly and I'm very conscious about like how much I swear. Um, Cause I do, I swear a lot in like, real life um and sometimes i actually tone it back in the videos because i think swearing too much can ruin (laughs) ruin your video too sure absolutely Um, so 
you have to be very conscious, but like you're saying in the right, you can get a certain tone from it. So I really tried to utilize that in a video I did. It was just a, it was like a mock of a property tour. I don't know if you've seen this one. I wasn't in it at all. It was just a very well shot property tour. And then I started like, you see this kitchen, Gordon Ramsay would fucking love this kitchen. <laughs> and like, I did a voiceover over it. And like that fuck four <laughs> seconds into the video, kept you watching the most boring property tour of all time. Great point. You know, even if you were offended by it or you loved it, you had to see either, you know, oh, this guy is a jerk and I hate him, but I have to see what he does next. So I can tell my broker of record or, you know, the broker at my office or, oh, I love this guy. Maybe this is, you know, I'm going to watch this cause it's funny. Right. Either way you're watching it. So I, you know, I, the way I grew up uh, swearing wasn't offensive. So I didn't really see it to be a big deal to start implementing it and, and just talking how I normally talk. Uh, I understand it can be offensive to some and I'm, that's never my intent to offend anyone, but that's just kind of how I talk. So yeah, you're I also not going like, to change it. your personality for somebody else. They may or may not be offended for whatever reason. Like Exactly. You know. And my wife swears way more than I do. So <laughs> she's awesome. doing, I didn't swear as much until we met. So. I'm good. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. Uh, I don't think I've seen that Gordon Ramsay one. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I can that. send it to you. It, it, people seemed to like that one, probably because my face wasn't in it. Yeah, it, definitely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's interesting, like I've always been, um, I've always been myself on within my content. Not always, but you know, since anyone in the industry knew who the hell I was, I was just myself, yeah. and I realized it resonates with people, and you make. Uh, people can make a personal connection with you rather than like, if you were, if you're reading a script, even if you just kind of like cut the edge off of your personality, like there's something about the edginess or the swearing or, um, you know, saying something vulgar that um, some people may not like, but others do, or it's not necessarily like, like, Oh, thank God he said, fuck it's, yeah, it, it's, they, they make a personal connection with you because you seem like a friend. You seem like someone that they would hang out with or would be fun to work with. And that's the power of video. Like that's the power of, of doing shit on social media anyways. And so many of us kind of dial it back to where we, we remove those little teeny things, even if it's like stumbling on your words, your voice cracking, uh, losing your train of thought, which happens to me all the goddamn time. Yeah. We, you know, they're squirrel moments. Oh, yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm losing my train of thought right now. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God, this is weird. Um, Let me know if I, I need to jump in. I'll jump in and save you. I'll give you the bat signal if, uh, <laughs> if I get any worse. But you you remove those little things that people resonate with because they, they're they like, I would say that. Yeah. Or that, that's how my friend talks or, you know, they sounds like a, a normal person. Yeah. Um, that's, that's so powerful. So it doesn't surprise me that you've seen success since you've started doing that. Um, and, and really interesting tidbit. I don't know why I did this, but when I started the podcast, I just decided I'm just gonna be myself, but I'm not going to say fuck. I'm, I'm just not going to, okay. not going to use that word for some reason. I didn't know why. I, honestly, I think at the time there were some people that were doing it so much because they're like, Gary V did it. So now I've got to say it a lot. Yeah. And it seemed disingenuous. It didn't seem real. And I'm like, I don't want to say it just like, so I just, I'll just avoid it. Yeah. Um, lately I've just kind of like, I don't care. Like I don't even notice it. Cause I, I speak the way I speak. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's everything. Like if you can just be yourself, you're going to attract the right people. Yeah. Like-minded people. Yes. People yes. you want to work with. And that's what I found out too. Like I was killing myself at first, just going for anyone and had some of the shittiest clients. That's another thing. Everyone's client is the best client. I fucking will straight up tell people when I don't like them. Like, you know, I'm, I don't work with people to just get a paycheck anymore. Like I, I want to work with people I like because the experience is going to be way better. I've been burned too many times from assholes, mm. um, you know, and it's just some deals are just not worth it. And if you can figure that out and figure out your lane and be able to work and attract similar people and like-minded people to you, it's going to be way more fun. You're just going to enjoy yourself more. Like I'm enjoying myself so much more now that I can just kind of do what I want to do and do how I want to like to think that these videos actually make me money is insane. <laughs> right. They're so dumb, you know, but like they get 
my my Instagram is like my biggest database now. Like I get messages all the time from I got a guy from England. He said, you, uh, you know, there's I have a client he's moving over uh, to Toronto. I need to hook you up. He swears like a fucking sailor. I got I I'm getting this big client. Apparently he's like well off all this shit. I'm getting him because I swear. <laughs> like you know it's crazy yeah <laughs> so oh, that's fantastic yeah so it's awesome i mean i've gotten uh listing appointments from wearing band t-shirts oh i like that band all i'm doing on instagram is starting conversations i think people are th- focusing too much on getting business they're forgetting about building relationships so that's all i want to do i wear a ramon shirt someone dms me i love the ramones Oh, that's awesome. So now I have a mental note that this person loves the Ramones. They've come to me. It doesn't seem like I'm selling them on anything now. Right. So now a week later on Instagram, when I see a Ramones clip, I send it to them and strike up another conversation. They know I'm in real estate. It says in my fucking title, you right. know, like, and then you just build it from there. It's not happening overnight. So that's, that's the way I think of it. I, this is so like at its, at its foundation, this is everything. Like what you're doing right here, naturally, this is what so many agents fight happening. They, they, they try so hard to not let those things happen. Or I don't think it's a conscious, some, sometimes it's conscious, but it's not like they're like, no, I don't want to attract the right people, but they're doing things that prevent the right people from being attracted to you. You, you know, you wearing a Ramon shirt or a band shirt or whatever, or just even picking a song in your Instagram reel or something like, I love that song. Yeah. What's happening there. It's a personal connection. And you know, you said it's been fun. Uh, The same thing happened with me. Like it it took one, my one and only real nightmare client, Vicky. uh, It took one Vicky to make me realize like, I, I need to start filtering these people out um, without filtering them out. Like, it's not like I have to, it's not like I'm a bouncer and like, well, you qualify to work with me and you don't, you just put yourself out there and, and let the right people come to you. And, and it's fun, but then also, don't you think that there are deeper relationships that more referrals come from? Have you found that to be the case? Totally. Totally. Cause my, you know, I have people from all around the world, really like messaging me and, and kind of following me and building relationships. So that's a whole, I didn't even think of that when I started this, Mm -hmm. I was thinking, okay, this is like directly, I'm going to do stuff for my market. I didn't even think of trying to go more global and, and try and have a relation where everyone can relate to the content I'm putting out because yeah, I happen to be in a great city where a lot of people do move, you know, a lot of people move to Toronto from all over the world. Um, so I, I'm fortunate there, but yeah, that was a whole thing that I didn't even realize was referrals, agent referrals. Yeah. It's agent crazy. referrals. It, I wasn't even thinking agent referrals, but absolutely. Yeah. That's a big part of it because yeah. if you were, I mean, Matt, if you were just talking about market statistics and sharing your new listing or God forbid the PDF for your listing and you posted on Instagram yeah, and yeah. went live at your open house from 11 to one, and you were just doing the same old horse shit, would any agent anywhere in the world know who you are or where you do business? No. 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 But, no. But you, they know you as Matt in Toronto with the agency, right? I know which brokerage you're with. Um, like, I know who you are. And so yeah. now you're top of mind for so many agents too. Yeah. It's been, it's been really neat to see kind of that unfold. And a lot of people ask now, like a lot of different agents, they're like, you know, I want to do what you do, but I'm not funny and I'm not this. And just like we were saying before, you need to do you. So whatever you do, do that. Showcase your personality. I feel like a lot of people got into the business because they thought they had a good personality. You know, there's not a lot of like extremely shy to themselves, real estate agents. Right. Um, I met a couple, but it's not the norm. (laughs) Not the norm. So like, use the traits that like attract people to you. Why do your friends like you? Well, then use that to your advantage because you know what I always use, Eric always makes fun of me, the broke agent for using the, the horseback riding analogy here. So I say, you know, if you love horseback riding, show that because there's other people who love horseback riding and right away you've niched down your market. Whereas if I'm, 
me and you are against this horseback person. Um, other people who like horseback riding, doesn't matter the deals me or you do, they're probably going to go and talk to that person first. And they have the advantage there because they've built that relationship and they've, you know, they have that in common. And more than ever, I think people want to work with friends. That's and, it. Yeah. They, they just want to work with friends. And people are always like, well, you know, you, you don't want to work with friends and friends wouldn't do this and that. And like, fuck, man, I don't know. I just say shit. And uh, people now always uh, come at me for kind of a lot of shit I say um, on these podcasts. I've learned that you've probably seen this too. This podcast, you say so much shit you don't even remember. Then someone will come yeah. call you out on stuff. It's like, fuck, man, I don't even remember saying that. I don't remember what I had for breakfast. Like, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it, no, totally. It's, it's weird like that. Yeah. It, it's just crazy. Like, like I said, people do really want to work with friends and I know some people think, Oh no, you need to keep it like business and personal separate, all that stuff. And what I always say, like with the friend thing to people, I'm like, you know, you want an agent who is going to go to bat for you you know, what are your best friends going to do for you? If you're about to go to a club and you have fucking spinach all in your teeth, your best friend and your friends are going to say, you got fucking spinach in your teeth. A stranger <laughs> right. or a business partner is probably not going to say that. Right. So you want to be friends. You want to build that friendship and then, you know, learn how to navigate it once you're, because yeah, there is some business to be done as well, but you want to be able to be transparent with your clients. Too many agents I see, they, they agree with every fucking thing the client says. We all grew up with the customers always, right? In real estate, the customer is fucking 95% wrong. Right. Usually, you know, like they don't really know what's going on. It's our job to tell them. And if that means we have to lose a listing because they want to list it $400,000 higher, then lose the listing. Don't, don't make yourself look dumb because that's not selling, you know? So it's a, it's rant. definitely a transition. Um, no, I'm, I'm glad you made it. Cause this is a, uh, this was a progression for me too, where the first part of my career, I was struggling a lot and I was always available. You know, if they texted me at 10 30, I'd text back. Um, but it came from scarcity. You yeah. know, I, I was, I needed to, to sell. I would dress a certain way. Cause I was told that this is how realtors need to dress. And I wore freaking, you know, slacks, and uh, you know, button up shirt and look like an absolute idiot on my way to court. And <laughs> it wasn't my style at all. Um, and, and people can feel that, right? Like they can feel when, when you're just, you don't yeah. feel comfortable. Um, I, I did so much shit that I thought I needed to do. Um, and I struggled dramatically. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting how that works. And, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't until I, I think this happened naturally for me. Once I, once I, I, I learned that, Hey, if you just put out some content with your own personality, you'll attract the right people. But I had to have faith that that was the case in the beginning because I had no proof and it was all theory. And I'm like, that sounds cool. Sounds cool. Like Matt's Matt and Dustin are telling me right now uh, to just be myself and to swear on video and post it. And I'll get, <laughs> I'll get business. Yeah. It sounds ridiculous. Right. But once you get the first person they're like, Hey, I saw your YouTube video or I went to your website and you seem like you'd be fun to work with. Mm-hmm. When can we meet? And then the first time this happened to me, I'm like thinking like, Oh, so I have to interview. Like I, I made the cut. I'm like, you yeah. know, and they're, they're like, no, you're, you're the only one we're talking to. Yeah. That right there taught me everything I needed to know. And then it's been game on ever since, but you have to have faith in the beginning. Right. Totally. And I, I was going to say that too. It's totally filtered out on the other end too. So like, I'm trying to attract the the same like-minded people, same with the clients. I found that so Mm. much that people are calling me and they know what they're getting and I'm not competing anymore. I'm just not competing with people. Like, and if I do, then whatever, I'll compete. But like, um, it's been so cool to see that just like you said to your, they're calling, Hey, we want to work with you. We just, you know, we, a lot of the ones I get is like, you know, we just think you're genuine. You're not going to try and bullshit us and tell us things we want to hear. Like I've got that message a lot and I'm really happy with, with that. And that's kind of the vibe I'm giving out because I'm not going to just tell you what you want to hear. And if you're looking for that agent, then, you know, go find them somewhere else. Cause that's just not, I don't want to waste my time or their time. 
exactly. Like it's, is it, this, this is the thing. And I, I have to explain it to people sometimes until they really get it. Cause they're, they're stuck in that scarcity mindset. Maybe they're in a financial situation where it's, you know, they need a closing, they need a commission check. I've been there. I totally get it. It's, yeah. it's okay. But once you can step out of that, um, you, you know, you realize that first off, it's good business to do what's best for the client. So yeah. if you guys don't get along, if you and your buyer do not get along and they're a very analytical person and you're very laid back and not detail oriented and you don't give a shit what the HOA fees are and they want to like analyze everything that makes up the HOA fees, like, you're not, you're not meant for each other. Mm -hmm. That's okay. So break up with the client or refer them to another agent who is a better fit. It's not, it's not that they're a, in this case, it's not that they're a terrible client. It's just, you're not the best match. And so if you're stuck with them, it's going to be contentious. It's going to be stressful. It's not going to be enjoyable. You're not going to be become friends and you're probably not going to get referrals because they're expecting you to be analytical and you're not. Whereas if you just say, Hey, you know what? I'm really not the best agent for you and your needs, but here, talk to Johnny, talk to Sue. She is, she really yeah. is. Uh, and here's why I think you guys would be a better fit. They're going to love you for that. Totally. And it's best for them. 100%. Same. And that goes for the same as like agents working like two, three hours out of their market. Mm. Um, like refer that. Oh, Jesus. Ref yeah. Refer it. And again, you're going to get from that client, that client's going to be so much happier. And then, you know, when their friends that they just moved from are looking to move, they're going to refer back to you. So that the, 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 the business is going to come from just being like, from start from the root starting and making the right decision. It's not a fast game. It's just not like, you're not going to be doing, you know, the videos that I started a year and a half ago, I'm starting to really see like that come to light now. Like the, the work I've put in over yeah. the year, year and a half. Cause people aren't, Oh, I saw your video. We want to list our house next week. That very rarely happens. Usually people are, you know, we're usually starts. We're thinking about this, you know, we might want to do some renos, stuff like that. And it's your job to follow up. Like it's a lot of my listings I'm going, I just had a listing appointment that I've been following up with for three years. Like I do the, I, I look, the best. Oh, they're the best. And the fucking house has gone up so much in values. It's a right. sick listing now. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's served them. It's, it's great. Yeah. So people see the kind of what I do on screen, but they don't see all the behind the scenes work that I still do. I know I talk a lot of shit and just, I'm very nonchalant, but I do do the work. I, you know, I do the work in the back end. I don't really cold call or door knock anymore. I just, it's not my, it's not, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't, I've tried for like, I used to door knock the first two years of my career and uh, just wasn't for me, but you know, I know tons of agents who kill at door knocking. That's another thing. You got to find out what works for you. Mm -hmm. Because everything, just because, you know, maybe you're awesome at door knocking. If I do exactly what you do and we knock on the same doors, it doesn't mean we're going to get the same results. Exactly. So you need to figure, and I always recommend when people are coming into the business, like try everything and try it for enough time that you actually know it doesn't work. Don't door knock for a week and say, no, it doesn't work. Like give it time. So that's like the first two years I was door knocking, cold calling, mail outs. And I was seeing, I was building up this data and seeing where these listings were coming from. So that's, but, that's what I think you should do when, when you're new, especially. I, I also started door knocking. I also started with a team for two years. I was a 50, 50 yeah. split with a team for my first two years. And I thought that was like, I wouldn't have been able to survive on my own. So, yeah. so for me and where I was at then, and, uh, my, my mindset and everything, like I needed the team. I, I, I think that was great advice you gave Matt. Um, I also started door knocking and did some cold calling, you know, the, just the chase stuff. It helped me get out of my comfort zone. It helped me be much more comfortable talking to people and not be so nervous and all that. And, and so that was valuable. That was extremely valuable, but I got one listing from it. Yeah. One listing from like a year and a half or something of door knocking. Yeah. Um, which most people would say that not a very good ROI, no. <laughs> but I mean, Matt, now you can do a, like a, a 15 second Instagram reel that 70,000 people see. It took you 
with editing and all that shit, maybe five minutes, maybe 10, let's say 30 yeah. minutes. Let's yeah. say it took 30 minutes of bullshit before you post it. And then 70,000 people see it. Yeah. Social media content is prospecting. Yeah, absolutely. People don't think, some people think I'm just fucking around on there. It's well, not, yeah, they're 95% right. But <laughs> like, right. it's exact. That's the point I always try and make like, okay, if you know, cold calling, all the old school stuff still works if you know how to navigate it. But mm -hmm. exactly what you said, I, I post a reel, get 70, 80,000 views, go knock on 70, 80,000 doors. Tell me how long it takes. Right. Like I can't even imagine. I don't even know. I don't even know how long that would take. Yeah. You know, I, I would talk, I would probably knock when I would door knock, I'd probably knock on 150, 200 doors a day. And depending on how literally That's a lot geographically close they are to each other yeah i would go out for three hours four hours and knock on like 100 to 200 doors and i'd maybe maybe talk to 20 people like yeah jesus and now more i mean well, people I are hiding behind you. their couch so they're calling the cops when the doorbell rings D dude i i would knock on doors and see them in there and they just <laughs> right this wouldn't cut. And it's the same, like, I don't know how it is there, but around me, even cold calling, like people don't have landlines anymore. Right. Like if you don't have their cell number, you're not getting a hold of them. So it's kind of, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I know people who still do it, but I think they just have a system and it's just at that point, it's a numbers game. You know, the people I know, they know, okay, if I knock on 20,000 doors a year, I'm going to have this much business. They just yes. kind of know that they've built that data. But if you're just trying to jump into it now, like five years into the business, it's probably not the best way to spend your time. Uh, I would agree. And I, even those that have it dialed in, they've been doing it for years, they're burned the hell out. And yep. if, if they're being honest, they're, they're going to like, this is a grind. Like it's just a constant hamster wheel. If you stop calling the deals stop. I just think if you ask yourself, if you're somebody who does cold calls and door knocking and, and that's your main source of everything, ask yourself, is this the is this leverageable? Is this scalable? Is it evergreen? And is this the highest and best use of my time? Yeah. And I I I think we know the answers to those. Just because it works doesn't mean that it works the best. Yeah. You know? Um Yeah. Like I said, it's we're starting to evolve now but I still think we're behind a lot of other um, businesses. Oh yeah. And, and like, just, yeah, like it's, I don't know, man. Some of the stuff I see, sorry, we're gonna have to cut this out. There's a we're not, Amazon we're not delivery. Shit out. No, we're good. That's Bowie. Bowie? Yeah. Dude, you are a big music guy, aren't you? Da yeah, his name's David Bowie. That's well, uh, my, my Amazon package. At least you know when the Amazon package is here. And he it's Amazon workers. It's also nice to know that uh, my dog's not the only one that does it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bowie, we have to stop now because we're doing an inter we're doing work. We're doing an interview. I heard him shake. He's my, he's my buyer's agent. He's like, no fucking way, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> he said that could be my new that could be my new bone. That's right. Uh, That's right, Bowie. Yeah. So yeah, I think <laughs> I think people in in the business that it's just like I said, I think it's finally evolving. Um but it's just stuff that has worked for so long. They just don't really want to try anything new. People are scared of change. Yeah. And they're scared to put themselves out there. And and rightfully so. Like, I mean, you could get lit up on social media, you know, mm -hmm. for just nothing. I know people who do great content who just get like lit up all the time. Um, and it, it could be like people, it could be hurtful comments to people. And some people, if you don't have thicker skin like it could be hard to get past that but right you just need to see you know that there's value in doing it right and when people are giving you shit i don't know anyone any extremely successful people who are just like trolling instagram all day and commenting negative shit no it's it, dude you're so spot on like anyone that's going to take time out of their day to shit on your post and talk shit to you about how you look or how you sound or you, you know, whatever, I guarantee you that they are below you in life. Yeah. I, there's no one that has reached any level of success 
that, that any of us would aspire to that act that way. Zero. Yeah. yeah. They, they don't exist. Exactly. And like, so you got to take that with a grain of salt at, at some point, you know, like these, and all the people talk shit to me. It's always fucking private profile. You can't even, you know, you can't even yeah. see any, you know, they're, they're, they're hiding behind their, their, their keyboard. So um, they're keyboard warriors. So you just got to take it for what it is. There's value there. And yeah, the negative comments are kind of few and far between, but those are the ones that usually stick. You can get 200 comments of everyone loving you. And then one comment, they say, oh, you know, you're an idiot and your mustache sucks. And I'm like, fuck. You know? like, Maybe it does. <laughs> Damn it. Shit, the mustache. Yeah. <laughs> That's mostly my shit. I get a lot of heat for the mustache. So how do you deal with that stuff? Because I know that that's a big objection for those that are not doing content. And, you know, I remember back to when I wasn't doing content, I was worried about how about looking stupid. But it's always like we think someone is going to think we look stupid. It doesn't mean that that's real. It, yeah. it doesn't mean that's reality at all. But every once in a while you have some jackass. It's some 14 year old douchebag in his parents' basement <laughs> yeah. um, in between Minecraft and, you know whatever the hell else 14 year olds do, uh, who talk shit to you. Like, how do you deal yeah. with it? What, what do you recommend? I just don't, sometimes I'll engage if I, cause sometimes what I'll do is I'll comment and I'll light them up. So you don't, you don't want to come at me in the comments. Cause I like, I got you, you know, like I, you're fucking done. Um, so sometimes I'll light them up so hard that they actually just delete the entire thread. That's my favorite. But a lot of times I just don't engage anymore they want you, they want that, right? They oh, want, totally. they want you to engage with them for them to feel important. Um, but I just know, you know, like I'm just trying to make people ha you know, what I'm trying to do with my content, what it all goes back to, like I said, like, I think too many agents are, I'm not condoning just like saying, going out there and swearing and doing, you know, you gotta do you, but like, I'm just trying to make people feel good at the end of the day, you know, like, um, a lot of people say, you know, your, your content's good, but it doesn't really add value. And I always argue, well, I think, you know, it makes people laugh. It, it maybe, you know, I get messages that it brightens people's day. I would say, I would think that that's more value than you'd think than just totally. from analytical statistics. Yeah. What so, does value mean? Like, you exactly. Know, it, entertainment it, and laughter. And that's not valuable. Yeah. No, no, give me so, a break. Exactly. Yeah, so I would just, you know, I would just go for it. If you're on the fence and another thing too, like people, I, I know so many people who are like, Oh yeah. I, you know, I had this video, but my hair was all messed up. Like no one knows what you're supposed to look like. Only you, like when your hair is out of place or you have like a zit or fucking whatever's going on, no one knows what you'd look like day to day. So you're the only one honing in on that imperfection right whatever's going on no one will even notice it and they might that may be the thing if your hair is all messed up the thing that they remember you by or it gets their mm -hmm. attention so you know chelsea pites yeah uh, on instagram like she's um her, she'll be her hair will be all messed up and yep. you know makeup's not on and stuff and she just puts herself out there and she gets so many close um relationships and connections because of it because yep. like, cause that's real shit. Yeah. You know, if you're always polished and done up and everything all the time, like it's hard to make a connection with the evening news anchor with stone Phillips, you know, it's, 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 that's, Oh man. I didn't realize we had so many similar points of view. Um, you use the stone Phillips analogy too. <laughs> never. <laughs> it's, um, is stone Phillips real or is that a Simpsons character? I can't remember. I, I don't know. I, I think know. Stone Phillips might've been like Dateline NBC or some shit <laughs> yeah. back in the day. I, I don't know. He might've been a real anchor. It's so crazy though, dude. Cause like, I just find it so weird. And like a lot of my content is kind of calling out. I, I poke fun at every, I poke fun at myself. I poke fun at clients and I poke fun at agents. So everyone kind of gets it. So I think that's yes. why it kind of works. I'm never like focusing on one, but I find that so funny with like, agents who like you know drive up in their mercedes and their suit and they're showing their gucci belts and like i'm like dude that's like to me that's not relatable right i understand you want to give a certain 
look across and like I don't know, you know Matt LaMarche? Mm-hmm. He kill he's a Porsche enthusiast. Yeah. And he kills it. You can genuinely see that he is passionate about Porsches. Oh yeah. He gets business. It's not like a flex. He loves Porsches and he gets business that way. And there's a difference between like loving and being passionate about something and just showing it off to show it off. Right. Because especially like I get if you're like only doing luxury and you've been doing it for five, 10 years and that's, you're just exclusively a luxury agent, then fine. That to- I a hundred percent get what you're doing other luxury clients. But if you're just getting into the business and you know, you're trying to show off the person who's struggling for a down payment on a $500,000 house is not going to relate to you with your Gucci belts and Mercedes and your fucking Ferragamo shoes. You know, they're yep. just not, um, so I think that's sometimes can actually hurt you. That approach could actually hurt your business. Yes. I, I could not agree more. Um, I mean, if, like you said, if that's you, like yeah. really, if that really is you awesome, because yeah. you're going to attract more people like you, but if it's not you, people know it, you're fronting. They know you stood in front of that private jet and then got kicked out, you know, uh, 30 seconds after you got the, the, the video, you know, pe- people can see right through that shit. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. Like I love, a lot of people don't know this, but I like, I love fashion and I do like, I, I buy a lot of shit and like, I, I love watches too, but nice. I don't really showcase that. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't find it really relevant. Um, but I love, because now I'm getting into the higher end market. I love the contrast of like the weird rocker guy who's making jokes and the con like i'm so not luxurious i go to a steakhouse and buy chicken tenders there's yeah. nothing about this fucking luxurious <laughs> you know i don't come from a lot of money uh, yeah I, like and i love that contrast and i think more people can relate to it like yes. i want to show when i'm going into these higher end houses i'm selling these houses now that like you know i'm impressed with the house too it's not like another day in the office for matt i'm just selling another five million dollar house you know like I think if you can bring that relatability to kind of everyone, it's just going to enhance your business. You Great don't have to be tip. so yeah. exclusive. I love that. Um, Matt, one more question, then I want to get to the rapid fire questions uh, and then we'll wrap this thing up. But, yep. um, you know, we talked a lot about why you should do content and some of the doors that have opened to you since for, for the agent listening that is maybe they've been doing some videos a little bit and they're, they're just starting or they're about to start, but they have all the same typical objections that we, we all have had at some point. You know, what are some tips that you'd have for people for being authentic or just creating good quality uh, content that people actually want to watch? You know, how, where should they start? Well, first you have to consume. So mm. you, you have to, you know, look at, Look at the trending TikTok stuff. That stuff kills right now. Um, if you're not like extremely creative, do some of the TikTok trends. You know, if, if that's what it's going to take to start those videos with the trending songs and people are pointing. That's kind of bullshit now, where they're pointing at all the fucking. Oh, it's terrible now. Yeah, that, and you can tell when they're uncomfortable dancing and everything. Oh yeah. But figure out like I do that. You can you can see even if it's not real estate related at all. I've seen some videos where I was like, oh, that's, that's a good, I could flip that and make that into like a real estate video, consume content. Like just because you're on Instagram scrolling doesn't mean you're not doing something productive. Now don't be on there for five hours straight stro- scrolling. Cause that's not really yeah. doing anything, but consume and then figure out what you want to put out to the world. Like, but it's got to come from a genuine place. Yes. They're going to read more than ever. People can read through your bullshit. So figure out what, what is you? Why do people, why the people around you, why are they attracted to you? And then showcase that on video. And if you're not great on video right away, film yourself knowing that you're not going to post the video and just see how you are. Get used to just having a, a camera in front of you. And then, you know, once you get comfortable with that, film yourself and show your friends or your siblings or your parents, and then do it again and show your brokerage 
and you know, it could take step, it could take months to get out and, and release a video, but I think you need to get on video. People right. need to know it's so much easier to call someone that people feel they know. And that's exactly what video does. People feel like they know you before they know you. So I, I don't even think it's negotiable anymore. You're going to have to do it. So I take agree. those steps. If you need, if you need a couple months to just get used to being in front of camera, see what works. Oh, you know, I, I just kind of sounded, my voice shook there. I, I sounded nervous. Maybe next time I could do this. You don't have to, just cause you're filming. It doesn't mean you got to release it. Right. But get used to it. Great advice. I mean, I think people look, just have faith that if you do the stuff that Matt just talked about, that I've talked about before, many other guests on the show have talked about. And if we're being honest, everyone knows they need to do this stuff. Yeah. Just have faith that if you do it and you do it consistently for long enough, you'll get the same results. You'll attract the right people at some point and you'll learn and you'll make little changes and, and improve, but you can't improve on something that doesn't freaking exist yet. Yeah. You've got to start doing it. And, uh, it, but I, I love that you mentioned consuming content. The, some of the best content creators are the best content consumers. Hands down. Totally. hundred yes. percent. You need to do that. And one, one thing before we go into the, the rapid fire here is you need, you know, at first every video is not going to be a home run and that's good. You could put out your first video and it could kill. You can put out your second video and it just will not hit at all, hmm. but that's your data okay, why did this one not work? And why did this one work? And then you find out how you're tailoring to your audience, what your audience likes, what they don't like. So when a video doesn't do well, I mean, me and me and the broke agent will fucking pull it immediately now because we're mortified. Um, but if, <laughs> you know, if you got to go through that trial and error and as you do more and more, you kind of know, you can tailor more to your audience and you know kind of what they like. So you have to go through that trial and error period. So if you have a couple of videos that don't do well, you can't stop there. That's data. Right. You know, and you're, you'll figure it out and then you'll get into a groove. Love it. That, that's gold advice right there. Gold advice from a pro. All right, my friend, let's do some rapid fire questions and then we'll wrap it up. All right. Either or questions you can elaborate if you want to, but uh, <laughs> let's, let's, uh, you know, emphasis on the rapid in the, the rapid fire. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll give everyone, um, you can let everyone know where they can find you and follow your shit. Okay. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Instagram or TikTok? Instagram. I fucking hate TikTok. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, books or podcasts? Podcasts. Podcasts or audio books? Podcasts. Right on. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Stupid Insane. question. Yeah. Stupid, stupid question. <laughs> Uh, Alexa or Google Home? Oh, uh, Alexa. I think they're both creepy though. Oh, totally. <laughs> Burgers or pizza? Pizza. Italian. Big nose. Ah, yes. yeah. Mustache. Kind of look like Mario, yeah. <laughs> Mario. <laughs> uh, New York or LA? LA. Um, mountains or beach? I don't like nature, but beach. I don't like nature. Okay. <laughs> uh, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, sports fan? Yes, of course. Okay. Um, NFL or NBA? NFL. NFL or NHL? NHL. Canadian. Uh, you're Canadian, of course. Yeah. These st stereotypes come from a real place. <laughs> Sometimes. So, Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> um, podcasts or vlogs? Oh, uh, podcast still. I like vlogs though. YouTube or Facebook Live? YouTube. Um, rich dad, poor dad, or millionaire real estate agent? Uh, millionaire real estate agent, but <laughs> it's a very enthusiastic response. Yeah. There. Um, yeah. Uber or Lyft? Uber. And Gary V or Grant Cardone? Gary V, one thousand percent. Common sentiment. Common sentiment. <laughs> I've grown to respect Grant Cardone for what he does, but it's a, it's a personality thing. It's a, I can't get behind. I have his book right here. I used it in a spoof video. Yeah. <laughs> 10 X rule. Yeah. I, I respect, you know, respect what he's can do with his business. I just don't agree with really his views at all. Fair enough. Fair enough. So Matt, where can people follow you and find you and, and see all the cool shit you're putting out there? Yeah. So Matt dot Leonetti L I O N 
E-T-T-I is uh, my handle and in, pretty much Instagram DM. I'm pretty good at responding. And then over ask podcast uh, that I, that I host with the broke agent. And we actually are releasing merch today. Nice. You get your, your new merch. We got a bunch of different shirts and a bunch of cool real estate sayings and all that bullshit. So it should be fun. Which one's your favorite? Which, which saying is your favorite? Uh, well, I got my own personal, you take care now uh, saying. One, I say you take care now as like pretty much like a fuck you in a lot of my videos. I'll go, okay, you take <laughs> care now, Karen. So I got a you take care now. We got showing confirmed. Um, on Wednesdays, we sell houses, a mean girls, uh, a mean girls one. Nice. And yeah, we got some over ass, some bro. The broke agent stuff is really cool. It's just the key. Yeah. So you don't have to, you know, no one will know you're really, if they don't know what the broke agent is, it'll right. just look like a cool key. So, but if they know, they know. If they know, they know, and you should fucking take it off immediately. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. <laughs> and we'll link to your social. We'll link to you, your podcast in the show notes if you're listening or in the description on YouTube if you're watching. Matt, appreciate the hell out of you for coming on the show, man. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. Loved it. Absolutely.